Pro Wrestling Weekly presents Today in Wrestling History, December 22. On this date in 2008, WWE Monday Night Raw aired live from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. In the main event, John Cena and Trish Stratus defeated Santino Morella and Beth Phoenix. On this date in 1982, Luis Ignacio Uribe Alvirde was born. The WWE superstar known as Sin Cara turns 30 today. On this date in 1997, WCW Monday Nitro aired live from Macon, Georgia. In the main event, Randy Savage defeated Lex Luger. This has been Today in Wrestling History, December 22. This is Jim the Anvil Nightheart for the Heart Foundation, and you're listening to Pro Wrestling Weekly with Ron Derry on 1490 WBCB, baby. Yeah! Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. For Ron Derry alongside Theo the Extern and the Starship, Matt Starship, taking your calls like he does. Well. Slowly, yeah, <laughs> quite well, yeah, apparently. No issues so far. No, no issues so far. That's good. And, and learning a little bit along the way as, uh, as, as we try to do here. We, we try to inform, educate, and entertain. You know, we, we kind of put the two together. It's not all about comedy here. At least we try not to make it that way. All right, some quick news and notes here. We'll get back to the phones in just a moment. I mentioned the, uh, the video game uh, update. Uh, video game licensee for WWE, THQ. I'm sure you've heard of them. Uh, they've done a few games over the years. They announced Wednesday that they'll be filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy and seek to sell the company as a whole. Uh, the move would seek to keep the company alive under a new ownership group. And actually, uh, there, there might be a potential buyer, according to uh, John from the Northeast, who actually put it up on the BCB Pro Wrestling Weekly Facebook fan page. Uh, he says that Ubisoft is a potential buyer of THQ's franchises and studio. Nothing official as to what will uh, come for the WWE games, but Ubisoft wants THQ to become a bargain buy before making the deal. WWE has acknowledged the THQ announcement and stated that the series is still in THQ's hands, barring anything unforeseen. So that's going to be one of those stay tuned and see what happens. Not quite like the stock update, which Thankfully, it's not quite in panic sell Mortimer sell mode to go back to trading places from 83. That's really sad, though, if THQ can't make uh, WWE games anymore because they've been making phenomenal games since the 90s. When I, I like the WCW games. They had... Um I remember NWO they had versus the world was the first one. You yep. had NW, WCW, NWO, Revenge, WrestleMania 2000. Uh, yeah, that was when they they took over in like yeah mm -hmm. like 99, 2000. No Mercy was another good one. Gosh, <laughs> taking me back to my college years now. <laughs> Freshman, sophomore year, just nonstop playing. Yeah, Mercy, oh, me right? and my friends would create pay per views during class and then go home and just wrestle for about then, three hours. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Glad to see that education's working out for you. All right, <laughs> let's let's get back to the phones. Let's get to Rob, who's been waiting patiently. Rob, welcome to Pro Wrestling Weekly. How you doing this week? Oh, Ron. Okay. Uh, How you doing? I recognize week? the voice. I, 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 we'll, we'll blame that on the rookie star, starship over here. How what's you what's going week? on, Ron? Did we lose you that quickly? Hello. Yeah. Oh, there you are. All right. Okay. They were just calling to say hi and hang up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, listen, I, I, if you were to mention the uh, uh, the highlight of the year, the 2012, I have to say the highlight of the year was when Rick Flair gave the figure four letter on to Paul. I think that was the best. Well, uh, I don't know about life. highlight of the year. It was certainly uh, certainly entertaining, to uh, to say the least, although... I don't know. I, I, I like Ric like Flair, but I'm also a Paul Flair. Heyman guy, so I guess I'm kind of neutral in that regard. Uh, all right. Well, call me about is Alberto Del Rio. Is he going to make a baby face turn now? Is he going to make a what? A baby, a baby face turn. He's not going to be healed no more? Oh, it looks that way, and uh, I don't know. Both he and The Miz are kind of floundering, so it'll be interesting to see what direction they go in. Uh, I don't I think that they'll be a tag team. Them. Because that'd be, that, 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 that could be great for them, you know. 
Oh, well, we'll see. The problem is both of them need to change their the dynamic of their characters, yeah. and they haven't quite figured out the best way to do that. Alberto Del Rio so smug. Yeah, and, 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 and in a way, the Miz is, too. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of my, uh, my former co-host. <laughs> but enough, but enough about Richie. He might, yeah. Sorry, what, what was... I was a little surprised with AJ this week. I did not expect that. I mean, uh, uh, I expect her with John Zena more, but now if you got the star, I, I guess she's probably going to be the guy that's going to be wrestling John Zena in the next few uh, weeks leading up to summer, uh, or, uh, leading up to Royal Rumble. And, well, uh, as, uh, as she said... Uh, uh, he, he, sitting on top of the ladder on Raw, she is certainly full of surprises. Thanks, uh, thanks so much for the call, Ron. We got to, uh, we got to get, we got to get rolling. Uh, a couple other quick tidbits here. Uh, Sin Cara underwent surgery on Thursday. Uh, Cara tweeting, "Thanks for all your support." On the road to the hospital for a mini surgery. Not really sure what that means or what the timetable for return is. A, a mini surgery. I don't know. Maybe even microscopic surgery. Just you know, translation from Spanish to English. Just kind of got lost there. I don't know. It's it's a possibility. Also, The Rock has been announced for the January 7th edition of Monday Night Raw leading up to the Rumble where he'll challenge CM Punk for the WWE title. Yes. He will also be at the January 8th SmackDown taping in his hometown of Tampa. That's according to the Miami Herald. So more of the great one on your WWE TV coming up in the next few weeks. A belated Christmas present for fans of uh, the jabroni beaten. All right, I'm not going to go into the whole bit. <laughs> It'll, it'll run well into the end of the show. Uh, also, this was this was something uh, you know, not to not to pull a Lance Storm and say if I can get serious for a minute, but uh, you know, it, this holiday season, you know, you're, you're always looking for for something positive. Uh, I mean, especially coming out of what happened, uh, you know, a week and change ago up in uh, up in Newtown, Connecticut, and uh, WWE, they're 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 great for for things of that nature. I mean. First of all, in reference to uh, to the Connecticut shootings, WWE at the beginning of the TLC pay per view initiated a 26 bell salute to honor the shooting victims, and I thought that was a really cool thing. But uh, but Daniel Bryan, I, I know he you know he's he's been a little bit quirky. He's had the whole comedy thing with uh, with with Kane, the tag team champions, and whatnot, but. Uh, when WWE was uh, was was in Pittsburgh this past Tuesday for for SmackDown, uh, there was apparently leading up to it there was a a YouTube video even uh, put together by a a seven year old boy who uh, who was battling cancer of the brain and spine, hmm. and Daniel Bryan is his favorite wrestler and and he really wanted to meet him and and Bryan got wind of this. And uh, the CBS affiliate in Pittsburgh actually, uh, you know, took cameras to the hospital and 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 you know ran the story on it. And you can check out the the videos on YouTube. But uh, yeah, th this this kid Connor uh, Connor, I guess it's Michaelic. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I uh, but either way, this this kid uh, this kid Connor, really cool. Just uh, I mean he. It was weird. He almost he almost seemed both in awe, but at the same time, just like super confident. Uh, yeah, you know, they were kind of going back, or or Dan Daniel Bryan was just asking him, like, uh, you know, he saw that he had a, a replica tag team championship belt. He's like, "Oh, are you the tag team champion?" So he's like, "Yeah, me and my brother are." And then <laughs> Daniel Bryan, out of nowhere, he calls Kane in from around the corner, his his tag team champion partner, and uh, and then they, you know they ask uh, they ask the two the two kids, like I said. the uh, Connor's seven, and his younger brother had to have been like four. Is like, do you, you know, do you think you can beat us? And the 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 younger one's just looking up, and he's like almost shaking his head. And Connor's <laughs> like, I can beat you for the, for the championship, sure. You know, it's just 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 just. Com and I guess his mindset is, you know what? Uh, I'm fighting and beating cancer. I can beat anything. And that's pretty. That's a pretty good mindset to have. And um, you know, Brian then went on to ask, "Can you put me in the no lock?" And uh, that, much to Brian's surprise, he actually locked it in pretty nicely to to the point where I guess jokingly Brian actually tapped out. So, but yeah, if you can check out the video, just you know, look up uh, Daniel Bryan uh, cancer visit. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you'll be able to pull it up. Either the the CBS affiliate in uh, Pittsburgh or YouTube will have it. But I just thought it was a really cool thing, uh, and uh, you know, just speaks volumes again to to the stuff that uh, to the WWE does. I know, I know, we rag on John Cena a lot. I mean, the Make a Wish stuff that he does—that's another really cool thing, and just. Uh, 
something something positive to take here as we uh, as we enter the final days here of the holiday season. You know, whether whether you're talking about how they do charity charity things with kids or is whether how they support the troops and they go overseas and do shows for yeah, just the tr- troops tribute themselves. Tribute for the troops was this past Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. They, they do a phenomenal works as far as being uh, charitable goes. And I think that's one thing that you can always commend the WWE in doing, at least in recent years. Yeah, even if you have, you know... <laughs> bounds and bounds of criticism as we have of their storyline writing Absolutely. at least in terms of their humanitarianism they they you know they've got that right at least Absolutely. wonder how much Vince has to do with that all right i got about two maybe three minutes here just enough time now, now that we've been serious we're going to completely uh, change that as we've got john from northeast philly on the line we're we're going back in the other direction here as john is notorious to do john welcome to the show how's it going guys how's that for an intro <laughs> Zanta Claus. Zanta Claus. Yeah, I know. I'm <laughs> o- only I could bring you something like that. I mean, I know we're up against it, so I'll just keep it quick. The one way you can fix the slammies is to maybe stop coming up with awards that you know who it's going to go to. Have kind of blatantly obvious. Four times. <laughs> yeah, the, the blatantly. Oh, yeah, exactly. The, the the kiss of the year award going to AJ and whomever. I was yeah. actually on the edge of my seat during that announcement. I was like, oh, who's going to win? <laughs> oh, who's it going to be? It's like, why not just name it the A.J. Lee Kiss Award? Yeah, I mean, Dick Buckus didn't win the Dick Buckus Award. They just named it after him. You know what I'm saying? Oh, gosh. Does that, does that mean 20 years down the road we're going to have the John Cena Superstar of the Year Award? Well, it, no, actually what it is is it'll be a trophy and it'll just boo at you. It'll boo it. <laughs> It'll be one of those live action, kind of like the microphones that have the, the, the sounds coming out of it, one of those type deals that uh, WWE sells. It's a gold trophy and a bronze trophy. One says Cena sucks, and the other one says let's, let's go. Let's go Cena? Oh, wow. <laughs> and you can determine which, 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 go, which labeling goes on the gold and which goes on the bronze. It's like a pair set. Yeah. <laughs> Where do we come up with these things? My goodness. <laughs> You know, it's it's. I hit this point of the show, and I know that the sleep deprivation has kicked in, and I'm just going, "What in the blue?" Ha- no. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's pretty much where where we're at at this point, and that's usually where both the best and worst radio kind of comes in, and you can pick which this is. I don't think I'll be winning a Slammy anytime soon for this radio show, although if I do. Knowing me, I'll probably get the gold trophy bronze because I'm that bright. All right, th- thanks so much for the call, John. We got to get rolling. Thanks, uh, thanks to Theo for chiming in here, and uh, thanks to the Starship for pushing the buttons, keeping us on the air here. And uh, what do we got next from the Starship? A little music until two fifteen, and then we've got some high school basketball action, Springford and Pensbury High School, and then more music up until six. Joe Lacomp will take over for you. And then we've got NFL action tonight, the Atlanta Falcons and the Detroit Lions. That'll do it for me. Stay tuned. Matt Starshik's up next. I'll be back next week with a year in review. And RC from Completely Damaged, she'll be in the house too here on Pro Wrestling Weekly. Fourteen ninety WBCB, Levittown, Fairless Hills, Trenton.